Hi everyone, um, it's Seddon here. Let's talk today about sustainability and moral issues. So it's a really complex problem that we're going to discuss here. So do you choose a product for its properties or its environmental impact? Well, in fact, it's both. If we wanted to consider these egg cartons here, some people might say that if I asked you which is the best, most environmentally friendly, some people might say the card carton this one here because it's recyclable well in fact while that is certainly um, more helpful more it's more uh, easily recyclable than a plastic carton if you went to a local farmers market perhaps you might want to take that one with you and reuse it so you really need to be assessing as you go so it's a very complex issue and not just what's easiest Humans, industrialization in the environment are linked massively nowadays. Humans have had a huge impact. We want to make sure that we are reducing our personal negative environmental impact on the planet and consider making better choices, such as making do with less and finding innovations to solve, solve these problems. So sustainability is meeting the needs of present generations and preserving resources for future generations. Why is this important? Because we want to use the Earth's resources sustainably. We want to protect non-renewable resources, such as oil, coal, metal ores, minerals, because these one day will run out. We call this finite. But we also want to manage renewable resources, such as wood, cotton, bamboo, shellac and leather, anything derived from plants or animals. There's three issues that we are going to consider mainly today. The first is resource use and waste. We use so many materials, guys. You can see these bundles of uh, plastic bottles here. It's just ridiculous. Many of the products we use are in scarce supply and non-renewable. If everyone in the world used all the resources we used, we'd need three planets to sustain us. The next we're going to look at is climate change. The processing of materials and manufacture, the transportation, use and disposal of those products all use fuel, all use energy. And by using these fossil fuels, they release carbon dioxide into the atmosphere which is contributing to climate change. We need to think about how to reduce our impact. And we're going to look at the impact on people because at every stage of, a, of the manufacture of a product uh, people are involved. They might not be paid well, they might be treated well, they might be exposed to pollutants. So first of all resource use and waste. Have a little think about this cartoon here. What's it trying to say? Pause and have a think. Well, I hopefully you can tell that it's about whether or not we are repairing products nowadays. It's such a different shift in attitude. Only 50, 60, 70 years ago, people would keep an item for as long as they could. It would be passed down from generations and it would be repaired. Nowadays, the expectation is that it's too expensive to get it repaired. It's much cheaper to buy something brand new and therefore we'll just dispose of it. We are a throwaway society, unfortunately. So we need to consider, can we do, make do with less? Can we design products to be durable and repairable? Can they have a longer lifespan in the first place? And we want to make sure that at the end of their useful life, they can be made useful again, not just thrown away. We call that cradle to cradle, not cradle to grave. So when products are made to be thrown away after only a short time, this is called planned or built-in obsolescence. Obsolescence. They have an artificially limited useful life. They either become unfashionable or non-functional after a period of time. Unfortunately, e-waste, electronic products, are particularly a uh, bad example of this, and so is fast fashion. Both of these different items, it is so commonplace nowadays for people to only hold on to something for a very short period of time, much less than the product could last for. 
only a couple of years perhaps for a phone because the newest one has a, a brand new camera or else it's actually designed for the battery to wear out and it can't be replaced this is this is planned obsolescence we can also think about the environment so for instance issues deforestation and pollution the solution is about trying to increase our use of renewables and the result is protection of the environment so recycling and uh, sorry using recyclable materials and renewable materials is a good start can we use materials which can be recycled at the end of their life if they can't be reused and can we make them from renewable materials in the first place particularly if you're using uh, wood make it from the FSC the Forestry Stewardship Council uh, which is a worldwide organisation which manages forests and they produce not only timber and wood but also paper and also bamboo so we can do a life cycle assessment and consider where we can reduce our impact so for instance material extraction do we need to be using raw materials could we for instance rather than uh, extracting aluminium ore could we be using recycled aluminium manufacturing there is a huge amount of energy that goes into manufacturing could it be from renewable resources packaging and transportation we use so much fuel in transportation can we reduce that impact put up use can we make it last longer can we make it so that that person wants to hold on to it for as long as possible and at the end of a product's life can we make it repairable can we make it reusable upcyclable if not can we at the very least make it recyclable rather than it going to landfill let's think about climate change so i could easily spend an entire lesson talking about just about climate change um, but just to give you an overview humans have been uh, in the industrial revolution have been burning a lot more fossil fuels um, and that has created a dramatic increase in co2 production and that co2 rise is closely matched by a temperature rise that temperature rise of only around a degree so far, which doesn't sound like much at all, has already seen uh, heat waves, um, roaring fires which cannot be stopped, hurricanes across the world. We are talking about significant impact to people and the environment. Two degrees, we will be seeing something very very similar at three days three degrees we're talking catastrophic and i'm not joking so how can we reduce our impact as designers that's what we're talking about today well transportation accounts for a massive proportion of fuel use and co2 production so let's consider making and distributing products locally within the uk or very least in close european countries we don't want to rely on shipping containers and trucks and planes moving across the planet can we design products to be really lightweight and be less voluminous in packaging um, that's why i find easter eggs for instance so frustrating every year because they have huge volume considering that it's just a bit of chocolate can we make industrial manufacture less reliant on coal and gas and switch to renewables like wind energy or nuclear let's think about the impact on people so we want to make these considerations in our life cycle assessment as well we want to make sure that we are paying our workers a fair wage skilled labor isn't cheap and cheap labor isn't skilled these ladies are from Bangladesh and they are making garments for us to wear. They are representative of other, typically women and even children, in uh, Vietnam and China and a, a number of countries that make not only garments but 
obviously products as well. We want to make sure we are avoiding child labour. We want to make sure that we are providing safe working conditions for these people. Some of them work incredibly long hours, very hostile environments, and there have even been things like fires and building collapses. We want to make sure that we are sourcing materials ethically so that we are not polluting the local environment. We're going to talk about that soon. Not only for these people across the world, but actually every time we move manufacture to a different country, we're reducing the number of jobs in the UK. We want to make sure that we are not discriminating against disability, sex or religion, and we're not using offensive symbology, language or colour. For instance, like this product, which is a, a toy, uh, a doll from sort of the 1920s, and it's called a, a gollywog. It's actually, as you can see, a very unfair representation of a person of colour. So we have a moral responsibility to be aware of these issues, so please always keep them in mind. Let's think about pollution, because this is a real problem. This is a huge impact on people. This uh, father and his son are out to fish, and you can see they are surrounded by primarily plastic waste, and it's dramatically impacting their local environment. This is a, an outflow from a textiles company and they are just releasing dyes and chemicals straight into the water supply. And more close to home, we need to think about our, uh, the atmospheric pollutants that we are releasing from, for instance, car exhausts and factories. Can we be reducing this so that not just countries elsewhere, but in the UK as well, we are reducing our negative impact on people. So, little question for you. Which do you think is the most polluting? We're not talking about CO2 here, just pollution, like in the previous slide. Pause it for a second and have a think. Well, the answer to the question is oil and fast fashion. I don't have a lot of time to get into it now, but oil primarily because of uh, oil leaks out at sea and the number of uh, seabirds and the secondary impact it's been having. But fast fashion is hugely polluting, primarily from uh, from dyes and uh, um, from materials being uh, let out into waters, um, which is then uh, impacting on people's drinking water. Um, and uh, and having effect on their directly on their health. So how can we make them more environmentally friendly? Well, design them to last, use the minimum materials needed, use biodegradable, recyclable and recycled materials, reduce the energy needed for manufacture, include a note to the consumer to recycle it, design it for disassembly at the end of its life, design it to be reused once its life is over. So I want you to pause this and see if you can complete the six R's. Which do you think should go with which? Pause it now. So let's go through the answers. So reduce is about minimising materials and energy and buying less. Rethinking is changing our current lifestyles and the way we design new products. Refusing is not buying products that are environmentally or socially unsustainable. Recycling is reprocessing the product's materials and using them for something else. Repairing is not allowing them to go to landfill if they don't function properly. Reusing is repurposing the product or its components. We want to keep these in mind every time. And I've got a way to remember. It's a fun little poem. It goes like this. Reduce, rethink, refuse, recycle, repair, reuse. I'll go through that one in class with you as well. It's got some fun motions. So just to recap, keep the six R's in the forefront of your mind when you are doing an analysis. Design products to be durable, repairable with a longer lifespan, so you're not designing for planned obsolescence. Consider your supply chain and the product's life cycle. Can it be made from renewable resources like the FSC to be made biodegradable and at least recyclable? Can we design them to be lightweight, easily shipped, and you not use unnecessary fuel. Can we make a fair wage, avoid polluting, 
and make it for an inclusive market.